Okay, guys, we're going to start a new project. Now, this gorgeous piece of 68 Ford Iron is owned by my buddy Jeffrey Lund. He lives in Palm Bay, Florida. He, uh, he asked to give his auto body shop a shout out. Ace's Auto Body in Palm Bay. Let me tell you, those guys did an unbelievable good job on this car. And I'm really picky because I worked next to an auto body shop for like 16 years. And I've seen good body work and I've seen bad body work. This car is gorgeous. So, what Jeffrey is doing is right now the car has got a two-barrel 289 in it. That's coming out. He picked up a 95 Mustang GT 5.0. He picked up a set of remanufactured GT40 P heads and one of those fake Chinese wind uh, four barrel intake manifolds. He's going to throw that in this car with the stock cam. He's going to put some new bearings and rings in it. Give it a dingle ball hone with the GT40 P's, with the stock springs, a stock cam, log manifolds, dual exhaust, cruiser. It's a nice, it's a nice setup. And I can't thank uh, Jeff enough because he hooked us all up with the cleanest set of E70Es I've seen in my life. They've got 90,000 miles on them and are in unbelievably good shape. Practically zero wear. Literally. I mean... I haven't I haven't gone through the guides yet, but I'm willing to bet the guides are still within way within spec. Because the old valves <laughs> were absolutely gorgeous. Let me grab them. Okay, the 1.78 Ford intake valves. The one on the left is how it came out of the out of the engine. And the one on the right got a quick 45 and a back cut to do some uh, modern flow testing with. The original flow tests I took on the E7s that we're going to go over today. We're going to go over completely stock with 90,000 miles versus a pretty serious bowl blend. And actually the exhaust is fully done, but it's it's what what we could expect, you know, somebody with a grinder and a few hours of wasted time to do. Notice the chamber is still completely stock. All right? We're going to go through these heads step by step. And uh, we're going to get a ton of information out of these. The exhaust valves were in just as good a shape, by the way. I mean, literally, they were fantastic. So, Jeffrey hooked us up with this, and he hooked us up with the intake off the 95 with the throttle body. So, I did some testing with all of that stuff all bolted up to the bench. Which is a really interesting. Okay, the ball blend is relatively serious because if you take a look, right? See if you can see how much has been removed from that bowl. Okay, tough to do with uh, holding the phone, but it, it's a pretty serious bowl bowl job. You know, the short side radius got some work, but I wanted to see what uh, what we can expect out of this. Taking a decent amount of metal out with a 178 intake valve. Uh, the valve job I did go over. I just hit the 45, and it was completely concentric, <laughs> just the way Ford did it. You know, you know what really bugs. I know I got a little conversation about Ford guys because I, I read the. Uh, there's a Ford. There's a Ford engine group on YouTube, but not YouTube, Facebook. I I, I read about, and first thing they say is, get AFRs. I don't care what what it is. Get AFRs. Yeah. Well, we're gonna do some work on these pieces of junk, and they're gonna work out really, really well. I'm gonna go. I'm really gonna kind of uh, aim for the fences on this. And if I don't make them into sprinklers, these are going to be about the baddest E7s around. 
I mean, I mean, there may be somebody sicky, sicker than me. Uh, there's a guy, George, up in, I think he's up in Canada. If you YouTube Killer E7 TEs, he's got a set that he really hogged out. I gave him a question. I wanted to know how thin he was making those castings, but he hasn't answered me. Uh, they're thin. Because <laughs> he put in some big bowls into those things. But he does a lot of turbo stuff. He's he's got his own shop. He's he's good. Uh, off task as usual. Okay. Far left two columns. Bone stock one seventy eight. I literally took the carbon off of it, bolted it on the bench, and ran it. Intake and exhaust. Okay. Intake maxed out one sixty one. That sounds about right. Okay, I didn't, uh, I didn't pour these because we, we know what they are. They're like 120, 129 on the intake, and I forget what they are on the exhaust, but they're tiny. Okay, the exhaust actually flowed a little better than I remembered. I didn't, I thought they were like 115. So they go up to 124.4 or 500, which really isn't bad considering it's got tiny exhaust port and a tiny valve. And... Let's take a look. Okay. The E7 port is... It's got all kinds of garbage in the way, you know. I mean... Ugh. There we go. You can see we got that big EGR boss sticking right up in the airstream. You've got the big lump at the top of the port where the EGR has got, there's actually a, a tube that goes along the entire length of the head that attaches to these to collect the exhaust gas and put it through the EGR system. Oh, I'm trying to remember all the things I wanted to say about these. Uh, We'll get it piece by piece, guys. I may repeat myself a couple times because I'm toast already. It's already hot in the garage. Okay. These flows. Serious bowl blend, valve job. I put a fresh cuts on the intake and exhaust valve. Let me put the pluses and minuses in. Okay, part two, because God forbid you touch the wrong button on the phone. So Sophia's going to have to edit these two videos together for me again. All righty. Now, what can you expect if you spend a little time? And I mean, well, it's not even a little time. That intake bowl took well over an hour. It may have been closer to two hours. And it's nowhere near... What the bowl on the you know 1.94 E7TEs look like. Notice I got them right on the bench so I could measure from from one to the other. I really wished I had a couple cracked ones I could cut up and uh, and measure. But as you can see, I lost a tiny bit of flow at 0.05, which I don't care about anyway. And we were plus 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 all the way down on the intake. We went from 161 to 193.3 at 600. Now, you're probably not going to run a 600 lift cam. So take a look at, you could run a 500 lift cam with some decent springs, right? 160 to 191. That's still 30 CFM. 30 CFM is no joke, right? How many horsepower can you make per CFM? It's arguable, but somewhere around two, depending upon the efficiency of the engine, right? Let's take a quick look at the exhaust. We've only got one minus, and it's at 0.25 lift. Remember, 0.25 lift, you tend to have a problem because there's too much air going around the short side radius, heading right up to the roof of the port, causes a little turbulence. Well, after you port it out, and it's more efficient getting air around the short side radius, sometimes that gets more pronounced. Okay? Not really a big gain at the lower lifts at all. In fact, it's just a tiny bit better. 
but as soon as you get around 0 0.35, 0 0.35 lift with the ported exhaust flows more than the stock exhaust port would flow at 600 lift. Okay, and it just takes off from there. Okay. And we got 162.3 with a small pipe, which is what you guys are probably going to be running on this because it's not, you know, it's not a, a drag engine at this point. So you're going to, it's that's going to be a decent exhaust flow, right? 193.3 with 162. You put the right, the right cam on there, which with the exhaust flowing that well, I'd probably be using a single profile. I don't even know if I would use a double profile at that point. And you tighten up the exhaust lobe center a little bit to give you a little more torque. That would run really well. Now, I'm not talking about running it through that disaster. Just wait until I show you the flows on that. That thing will make you cry. And uh, Jeffrey said this one doesn't flow as well as the older ones that uh, doesn't have that curved neck on that throttle body. I thought these flowed better, but I have, I have an older GT one, but the one I have was cut in half and ported and worked. This is completely stock stuff, so I'm going to do some flow work with it completely stock, and then uh, I don't think I'm going to sawz all that in half and work on it, because that's just, it's just nuts. But... We are going to talk about this, okay? And the way I set it up, we've flowed through five, which has got a serious dog leg on it, right? This is where the port air comes in, and then it takes a hard turn and another hard turn, okay? This is just as bad. But you go down towards the back of it, this looks like a tunnel ramp. It's about as straight as you can get. Right? So, what did I measure? I think I measured five verse... It was this one here. Four, I think, right? We measured those. And uh, interesting stuff. We're going we're gonna to do another video on that soon. All right. Now, if you notice, this isn't uh, Charlie's usual quality. Yeah, no. It's not, it's not going to be until... It's relatively finalized. Now this is cut it, flow it, see what you got, cut it some more type testing. Okay? You can see I still have the whole boss in here. The, the DV E7s get that boss mowed out. I want to see what I can do with the boss in. Okay, if I can get close, I'll leave it in. I know a lot of guys hate that when I mow it out. Okay. Intake port. I literally ran the burr up and down it to clean the carbon off of it. It has not been expanded. It's still got the stock pinch. Stock pinch. Been calculated about 240 CFM. So that's not holding us back. And I did the throat ratios after the valve job, right? 1.605 for the intake. 1.29 for the exhaust, right? You got 90% and 88%. Okay, so, you know, I would not call this ported. It's kind of cleaned. Because, <laughs> you know, it has, still has the, uh, all the casting lines. You can still see the, the pinch. You know, this bulges out on this side a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. You can see it a little bit. You can see it on the floor, right? The way it comes in. And, of course, the other uh, push rod side is way high. And then you got basically a dead straight wall all the way to the bowl. But remember you're getting 193 CFM out of this. Throw it out on a four barrel with a decent cam, you'd be able to get some decent power out of that. And it's all Ford stuff. I don't know why Ford guys do not want to run Ford stuff. They always want to run AFR stuff. 
these heads are really freaking nice. I mean, Ford. All right, I'm going to tell you a little Ford story. My, I bought my 88 one-ton truck with a throttle body 350. My buddy Paul bought an 80, 88. They bought them right almost, almost exactly the same time. Eddie Bauer, big Bronco with a 5-liter in it. And, you know, I kind of joked that. I couldn't get the bigger engine, blah, blah, blah. That 5-liter ran so much better than my 5.7-liter, and he never touched the damn thing. He must have had it for that truck for like 20 years and never touched that engine. Completely stock, ran like a dream. Because Ford actually had a good fuel injection system. As much as I hate these for airflow, the technology on that intake manifold and the sequential injection is night and day versus the throttle body injection garbage. So I'm not sure why, why Ford gets such a bad rap. I mean, you take some Ford stuff, you put some time into it, and it runs like nobody's business. I mean, and we're going to prove that with these heads. Someone's going to be lucky enough to get their hands on these when I'm done with them. And these are going to lay down some impressive times. I am seriously thinking about 1.85 valve combination with a 50 degree seat. See what I can do with the 50 degree seat because I got the GT 40Ps with those sizes coming in this week. So it'll be interesting to see what I can do with these and the Ps at the same time. All right, guys. Thanks.